Now this is the second video I'm recording about the quotient topology and in it we will be talking about continuous maps from quotient spaces to other spaces. So first I want to talk about just maps from a quotient space. So let's suppose that x is a space, uh, tilde is an equivalence relation on x, and y is some other space, and we have a map from x to y. So given such a map, um, we say f descends to the quotient oops, if there exists a map which I'll write f bar from the quotient to y such that the map from x to y is obtained by composing the quotient map from x to y, sorry, from x to x mod tilde, with f bar. So here q is the quotient map that sends a point in x to its equivalence class. So this is what it means for a map to descend to the quotient. And this, this happens, as you can sort of see, if and only if the value of f depends on a point in x only through its equivalence class. So this occurs, in other words, f descends to the quotient, if and only if um, the value f of x only depends on x through its equivalence class. Modulo the equivalence relation. In other words, this happens if and only if whenever q of x1 equals q of x2, in other words x1 and x2 are equivalent, then the values of the function agree. Conversely, if I have a map from the quotient to y, I can pre-compose it with the quotient map. So given a map for g from the quotient to y, pre-compose it with uh, the quotient map q, which goes from x to x mod tilde, uh, to get a map f going all the way from x to the quotient and then down to y such that uh, so f equals g compose q in other words looking up at this equation here f bar equals g. In other words, f descends the quotient and the map it gives you is g. So functions on the quotient space are precisely in correspondence with maps on x that descend to the quotient. So the result we want to prove is that this is still true if we talk about continuous maps if we use the quotient topology on x mod tilde. In other words, given a continuous map f from x to y um, 
which descends to the quotient. The map f bar that we get on the quotient, the induced map on the quotient, uh, is continuous with respect to the quotient topology on x mod tilde. Conversely, given a map, a continuous map, G, defined on the quotient, um, the composition. <coughs> which is uh, G compose Q, is a continuous map which descends to the quotient. And it in fact descends to G. Okay, so the two things we need to prove, actually the e easiest one is the converse. So if I give you a continuous map, I want to show that its composition with this quotient map is continuous. Well, that's true because we, sh we saw that compositions of continuous maps are continuous, and we saw in the last video that the quotient map is continuous. So the converse is clear. The converse is true because F is a composition of continuous maps. So let's try proving the other direction, which is that if we start with a continuous map which descends to the quotient, then the induced map on the quotient is continuous. So given F, which descends to the quotient, We want to show that the induced map is continuous. So we take an open set in Y and we look at its pre-image. Take some V, open set in Y, its pre-image under F bar is open in the quotient topology if and only if if and only if its pre image under the quotient map is open. This was the definition of the quotient topology. Open subsets of X mod tilde are open if and only if their pre-image under Q is open. Okay, but what is Q inverse F bar inverse? Well, it's exactly F bar compose Q inverse. The inverse, you have to switch the order. And what is F bar compose Q? Let's whiz back up to the top. F bar compose Q is exactly F. So, F bar of V is open because Q inverse F bar inverse of V is F inverse of V and F is a continuous map. My assumption 
so fm.cp is open so this that's it that that's all i wanted to say in this video it's a little bit technical and it's a little bit tautological if you look back through it it didn't really do very much but nonetheless i think it's an idea that takes getting your head around if you've never seen it before and it's a really useful lemma so we'll often want to talk about continuous maps on quotient spaces and all you need to do then is to check that it's continuous before you take the quotient and check that it descends to the quotient.